Okay, so this uh, will be uh, a session with a Q&A about the coursework, and I will also do a remote uh, connection to the university uh, to connect and work to the computers in uh, 802 or 803 and start OpNet remotely so that you know how you can actually run OpNet remotely from home during the Christmas break. So we're on Moodle on the, on the unit page. Okay, and I have the remote connection guide here. So we have the VPN. Hopefully by now you will have the VPN yourselves as well uh, installed. So if you don't, just follow the instructions here. All you need to do is go to a website, download the program, and then uh, the, the address for the VPN is student VPN port AC UK that you need for it, and that's it. To connect to it, it has multi-factor authentication as everything does in the universe now. So I'm gonna get a one-time code. And it's 206053 this time, click next. And when this guy turns green, it means that we're good to go. Okay, so now I can get this out a little bit. So that's the VPN connected. Away. So next is X to go. All right, so X to go, we need to use uh, this guy, which is the second link on the on site, and of which we need to click on the using X to go. So the first thing that this web page does is it gives you host names of computers. So we have Anglesey 202 and Anglesey 203. These are the ones that we care about. Um, the ones in two or three are significantly more. So there's about 50 of them. All right. And there's about 28, I think, or 22 in A202. A202 is names of physicists and scientists. A203 is animal names. Okay. So even if you don't know a specific host, if you just think of an animal, it's the easiest way to do. So deer, elk, whatever, that's it. Uh, we will try to make sure that the computers are on and that the computers are switched into Linux mode. I mean, that's what they default when they start up anyway. Okay, but if you try a host and it says a socket error disconnected, you can always try another host. Okay, so try another animal. So how do we do all this? Well, most of you will have Windows, I will assume. So there is instructions for everything. So you download the software, let it through the firewall. If you're on a Mac specifically, you must definitely do a restart after you install it. Okay. And you need to accept all permissions and everything else. So just follow the instructions here. And I will set it up once and try it. So let's have a look. Okay, so I already have a session here, which is the one that I use in order to connect uh, to a2.net. So now I will basically set a new session up. Okay, in order to uh, connect to a23. So I'm going to call it a23. And the host can be any animal. So let's say bear. And let's just double check, just to make sure we don't get it wrong. You should have the full name of the host, okay? So it should be bear e port ac uk. So let's do that, bear.e.port.ac.uk. Username is your normal username, okay? So up, blah, 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 all right? Uh, so I will log in as Vas, because of special, yes. Uh, you will need to use the proxy server which is our ssh.ee.port.ac.uk. All right. And you need same login and same password. And you need to choose the MATE session type. Let's just verify all this. There we go. This and so on. Okay. So, okay. So the guy doesn't seem to be using the proxy server anywhere on the connection. Okay, so let's try it without it. Although I usually do, and that makes me wonder why. I think maybe it's a thing because of a2.net which will connect to it. So just keep it simple, do it like this. Click okay. 
the resolution for the screen defaults to 800 by 600 and you can change this all right so i'm on i'm on an imac so i have a 5k screen so i can set the resolution to that if i want to or i can set it to full screen and so on i want this time i will do it at 1440 by 900 because i want it to be smaller and manageable so i want to be able to see the entire window easily once you get it going once i recommend you set it to full screen because that will give you the better experience when you're connecting and working on it so let me try and log into this so the first thing that you need to do is you need to exchange keys with uh, the server on the other side because it is an ssh connection so you say yes And then the session will start. So of course, as it turns out, you don't really need the proxy server for this. Okay, so that's it. I'm logged in. And if I go to applications, uh, apps menu, school of engineering, then you will find uh, YSERC. Oh, okay. Thank you, Cedric, for moving everything around modeling applications local open it model all right so it will start you can minimize the terminal window you don't need it and then riverbed will start and you can do file open and start up the project that you're working on okay you can work for as long as you like there are a couple of things that i would like you to do okay so when you're finished working on open it i want you to close the program and I don't want you to just click on the X and disconnect. This will essentially let the session hang. Okay, so the session will still be running on the computer. You'll still be connected. <coughs> there will just simply be no interaction between the session and you. And eventually, after a few hours, the session will time out. If you do this, you are slowing down the remote host, one. But more importantly, if you are running OpNet and you haven't shut it down, and you stop working and just do this, you are still holding the OpNet license. Okay. This means that with only 60 licenses to go and so many people to use them, it will be a problem for other users to actually get licenses. Of course, we have a script that goes in every morning and just kicks all, resets all OpNet licenses. And we've done that for that very reason. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's the, the polite, the kind thing to do to just make sure that you close, open it, and then don't click on the X, just go to system, log out, log out, click on the on off switch here, and you don't even need to, it does it on its own, and then that's it. Okay, and you can cancel this, and you can close the session window as this. All right, so this is how to connect. Again, I'll stress out, if one of the hosts doesn't work, Try another one, any animal that you can think of. The weirder the animal, the better, obviously. I'm pretty sure that nobody will try to connect to Kudu or Lynx or Marmot. All right, save this list and try it because you don't want to be working on a computer with lots of other uh, people as well. A way to figure out who is sitting on a computer is to open a terminal and simply type who, W-H-O. So that will show you all of the users that are currently connected on that machine. If you do get to the point that your network is uh, almost complete and you're running your full simulations and you see that your computer is relatively slow, then all you need to do is the first thing to do would be to type who, see if there's anybody else working on the computer. And if there is more than a couple more users, then I really recommend that you save your work, log out and log in to another computer to do that. Okay, of course, it's January, that means that if you have a license for open, you'll give it up. And if people are trying like crazy to connect all the time, you might be giving up your open license. And then if you connect to another computer, you might not be able to actually work. All right. So it's a good idea, perhaps, to make sure that you connect. As soon as you connect, type who, see if anybody else is working on that computer, and then actually try to start work. All right. Statistically, other people who will connect will always try the first computers on this list. You, I recommend you try start working on the last 
computers on the list. Fun fact, you'll also notice that there's Quagga and Zebra here that we're using in the routing lab sheets in AWS.NET. Hooray, they're animal. Okay, so that, um, what else do I need? So uh, what else do I need to say? Um, we, how far have you people started working on the coursework at all? So I hope you have. So I want to do sort of a progress report. Okay, so you can raise your hands in uh, in Zoom. Okay, so I want to ask how many of you have found the game and have played it and tried to capture the traffic. So the very first stage. So if you have done this, just raise your hand. Okay. Slightly worrying, but all right. <laughs> okay. You need to get, thank you guys. So you need to get started on this as soon as possible. Okay. So you need to choose a game. The criterion to choose the game is to be able to get lots of information about the game. Ideally, uh, the server that you connect to so that you can filter the traffic in uh, Wireshark. And if possible, um, what sort of delay would be acceptable for the game to play? Okay, so those couple of uh, things are what will really, what really, what should really decide which game to play. Ideally, games that offer offer a console or a terminal uh, are better because they can provide you with this information easier. Okay, um, do we have? I don't. I don't really want to go through the process of explaining the whole game again, the whole process again. Uh, there is a video on the previous week. On uh, in Zoom, in uh, sorry, in Moodle, and you can watch it. And I explain, you know, I think it's about fifteen minutes, and I explain every aspect of the coursework. Uh, please disregard the, you know, the deadline that it says. It's it's last year's video, and the coursework is the same. All right. Uh, so what I would like to do today is I would like to take questions. So do you have any questions about anything uh, regarding the coursework? Is there anything that you don't understand that you'd like help with? I have. The packets that I've captured are barely a few kilobytes. <laughs> okay. Well, so that's so that's open TTD. So it's not. It's just the the packets are just very small. It's a very simple game and network kind of. Uh, okay. Does that matter? Mm. I would like it to be a full-on multiplayer game. So how many players can you have on this game? So you can have 255 players. Okay. I, te I tested it with five. Okay. So does it have like, it doesn't have heavy graphics? What is it? Like, <laughs> I've never no, it it, it's, yeah, it's a very simple game. It's not got too much going on. So maybe I should choose a different game. So it might not be fit for purpose, yeah? So you can have the, the point was that I could have met, I could have said if it was scaled up realistically from from five, then I can just multiply that to get 255 players to see what the traffic was like. Okay, but what but, I, I want 50 players really. However, you can still do this. So I could just I could just times the packet size by 10 really to, to see what it was like with 50 players is what I wanted to achieve. Yes, so so that you get the baseline scenario of what the traffic should look like with 50 players. Yes, you can. Okay, but yeah, that, that it's only a couple, a couple kilobytes at a time. So. You can use it. All right. However, you will end up with a situation where your it's background traffic, where your background traffic in the simulation will consist of like 98% of the traffic or something horrendous like that. I mean, you can still implement QoS and it will still give you priority and it will still work and everything. But in order to delay this game, you will suffer. So the second scenario to try to figure out which, uh, how much traffic to put into the network in order to break the game will be really hard for you. Okay, yeah, okay. thanks. I'll, I'll choose a different. If you're happy with that, do that. Otherwise, just choose another game. <clears throat> a Counter-Strike is usually my first option for this, uh, Andre. 
So yes, because it also it provides the terminal, so you can get lots of information about it. It's a very famous game, so there's lots of information with regards to the delay and the lag and what is acceptable delay for you to play it well and so on. So yes, uh, Counter Strike and all the all the you know Quake, for example, uh, or generally shoot them up like that. Uh, games are are good for for this. <clears throat> Yes, Minecraft should also do it. Yep. And exactly, yes, Counter Strike Go is free, so you can use that and it's straightforward. And remember, you don't need to like buy a game, you can download a demo of a game and still play. You only need to play for like 10 minutes. Okay, and capture the traffic. So you don't need to have the full version of the game to do it. All right. Anybody else? Okay, so I noticed that's very few of us here. It's half the class. Uh, I'm sure that everybody else is thinking, oh yes, this will be recorded, so that's fine. Uh, okay, what can we do? <laughs> so uh, if you don't have any other questions, I don't have anything else to tell you today. I mean, it's that's it. Somebody asked me if we were going to get a deadline extension for the coursework. Okay, uh, I'm thinking that we've lost a week because of OpenNet wasn't working. And it was a week in the semester. So the only really important aspect of it that we lost is that we were not in the lab last week for me to help you out with it. Okay. However, seeing as most of you have not even started on it, I don't see the point in giving you a coursework whose deadline would be in the exam period. I would really rather you finish the coursework as soon as possible, preferably ideally before Christmas or within the Christmas break. Yeah and you can concentrate on your exams and everything else uh, in January and just do that, okay? So I'm not thinking of uh, extending the deadline for the course at this point. I really think that there's no reason for it. Okay. A anybody would like to debate this at all? Bash, I've got a question. Yes. Yeah, you see for the methodology, uh -huh. I've, uh, I've written about collecting data from Wireshark. Okay. But do you also do you also write um how you use OpNet to build a test um, network simulation? So essentially, so this is uh this is for you to get a baseline of the traffic that you're using. So or are you talking about scenario one? This is basically scenario one, but um okay. So do you, do you also, do you, you see in the other part, the next part of the coursework where you have to write about a uh, simulation configuration, uh -huh. are you basically saying the same thing over again? Uh, or, right. I'm getting confused. No, so the methodology talks about uh, the game in general. So the four questions that we, that we have for the coursework, the first one is how did you basically choose a game and how did you capture the traffic from that game? All right. So the first part of the course will deal with uh, the logistics of actually getting the traffic ready for OpNet. All right. So you play the game, you capture it with Wireshark, you get statistics out of it, and then you get the numbers that you need, and then you implement this in OpNet. So you have your packet arrival time, and you have your packet size, and that's it. That stops there. The rest of the methodology is what is about designing the network. So the network design aspect of thing, as soon as as long as you follow my guideline that I want it to be at least five different cities with at least 50 players in total, that gives you freedom to do pretty much whatever you want with the other aspects of the network. Yes, you can make it a UK based network, you can make it a European network, you can make it a transatlantic network if you like. I've had students in the past that had the, the game server in America, which was slightly ridiculous, but you know, the game was the server was in America, what can you do? Uh, so the rest of the methodology talks about, so, you know, there's a specific part of the methodology that talks about building the network itself. And the criteria to build the network are very loose. Yeah, the only thing that I'm asking is five different geographic locations, 50 players, that's it. Anything else, you can do whatever you like with it. Okay, and then we're talking about importing the traffic that we captured onto that network and running the simulation. So that will be the first scenario, essentially. Does that answer your question? Yes. 
Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So yes, plus that that one extra week. In all probability, other people might because I've had uh, Thanos has had students that have missed a couple of lab sessions because of this because their lab sessions were in the middle of the week, and they missed a lot of work. So he will most probably give them an extension of one week. So because I've been doing this for many years and because I was a student as well, a lot of them will just try to do the coursework in the last week. Okay. Uh, it is what it is. It's part of the student experience and everything. That's fine. I understand it. So it's better to not extend the deadline and be one week earlier than Thanos' class that contains like 240 students anyway. But I really, really, really can't stress enough how important it is and how beneficial it will be to you to get this coursework out of the way as soon as possible. Okay. Do it during Christmas. And especially up until the Christmas day, if you send me an email that have a question about it, I will help you with it. Okay. If worse comes to worse and you're really struggling with something and you're really stuck and you can't move forward to something, I can arrange the Zoom as well. And you know, you can show me, share your screen with me, and you can show me what's happening and I can help you out with it. All right. So yes. I really recommend you get this out of the way as soon as possible. Any other questions? Yes, Fuss, I do have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. Yes, tell me. Um, basically, I was wondering if um, the connection with X2Go and the student VPN will be much more reliable since it's in a different lab. Have you had problems before with this? I haven't uh, I haven't tried it with A2. Uh, dot dot o2 and a2 dot o3 but with a2 dot net x2 go just wasn't working for anyone you know what i mean this is a bit of an over you know exaggeration because i've had students that have completely worked in it dot net i have a, i have a student in italy who is still there and has done everything for the, for the unit yes so yes some people might have problems with a2 dot net but the problems with a2 dot net specifically go to the fact that we are jumping through lots of hoops to get you into A2.net because A2.net is isolated behind Columbus so that any networking uh, problems don't spill out to the rest of the class. So if you have, if you're advertising a, root, a wrong route in a routing lab sheet, then that needs to be isolated in there. Okay, so we are essentially connecting through our SSH e 4 proxy server and that is being forwarded through Columbus into the lab. So there's two different tri types of forwarding that go on until you get into A2.net. Things with A22 and A23 are simpler because as we saw, you don't even need the SSH proxy server to connect. You just, as soon as you connect to the VPN, you're in the university network, so you can just access the hosts and connect to them. It generally is more reliable. Of course, it all depends on your network connection. Okay. And for the first week, so the next week that's coming, if there is a student that goes into the lab and decides to work on Windows and reboots the damn thing, that's it. You can't really do anything about it, okay? Uh, however, the probability of that happening, especially during the Christmas break, not so, not so big, okay? So generally, A22 and A23 are much more reliable than A2.net with regards to the remote connection and everything else. Of course, it's still a remote connection, so things can go wrong, especially if you're running a simulation that will go on for hours. I've had students in the past that had simulation that had to run for a long time, okay, and it just died. However, if that happens, if you do run a simulation and the program just, the connection just drops, we have found that OpenNet will still continue running the simulation in the background. So if you give it enough time, if you know roughly, if you can calculate how long it will take for the simulation to run and connect afterwards, the first thing that you can do is you can recover your work. So it will ask you to recover some scenarios. So do that. And then the second thing that you can not do is you can go to the results and see that your results will most probably have been collected anyway. But now we're talking about the, the very last parts of the simulation. Okay, on the project where your network will be full on built and you will have implemented QoS and you'll be trying to see uh, the result of that. 
Okay. Well, okay. Thank you for answering my question, Bus. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. So I'll stop the recording here.